In, in my opinion, Art and Draw is not at its peak. I think it's still going to grow because uh, mostly, well, I'm not going to go too far, but electric, I think, is going to change a lot of that. Most enduro riders in the last couple of years, they got interested into hard enduro because it's impressive and also because it, 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 it asks um, uh, more talent and technique. And so we try to trialize our enduro bikes. So we'll put gummy tires, we'll put softer suspension, uh, we'll, we'll try to lower the bike or, you know, manage to make it as light and nimble as possible. But at, at some point, there's so much you can do with a, you know, 250 pounds bike, you know, like you, you can't, it's still a, a big enduro bike that's made for, you know, bigger distances and, and uh, you know, have more fuel capacity and stuff like that. So, in, in, so there's like a limit where you can go. Basically, an ideal gas bike for Art Enduro. Uh, I think everybody would agree with me. It's a 300 cc uh, two-stroke uh, dirt bike. Whatever the brand is, they all have their their plus and their minus. But like, it's just like the that's where the standard, the golden standard is, right? These days, like all the the best riders in the world, that's what they'll want to ride. When I when I saw like the first electric bikes that were coming on um, I was a bit skeptical you know like every petrol head that you know and um, but I you know I'm, I'm a really curious guy and I like to try new things and everything so I saw I started with a, a basically a Suron X I had a blast like it, it was like a, an, a game changer for me it got me confident that it can be a viable option. The range was, you know, okay uh, for trail riding. It's like a, a little short, but it was enough to have fun. The bike was really capable. Like it was actually so much lighter than my, my two stroke. And, and it, was, it was confidence inspiring. The Suron attracted all sorts of people because it was not too powerful, because it was kind of a hybrid with a mountain bike. A lot of guys were coming from mountain bike background, you know, and they got into it and they were like, wow, this is like, it feels like a mountain bike, but then you can go uphill and you can go a lot faster. And the problem with those bikes, you know, the, the geometry of the bike was really short and you would be cramped as an adult. And I'm not tall, I'm, I'm like 5'10", I'm, I'm not that big, you know. And I was really cramped on those bikes and the, the position of the, bag, the pegs were, were too close to the, the handlebar and everything. So they were made for teenagers. And they would, you know, break uh, if you treat them as you would a normal enduro bike, you know. We're hard on our, on our stuff and they, they just, they didn't last. Like we, we would go through a bike in a couple months. Really like the, the, the electric part, I was convinced. It's just the rest that, that got me, you know, left me on my, my appetite. Like I, I, I wanted more. Everybody wants to know about range. When it's on, it consumes. When it's off, it doesn't consume. It's not like a gas bike, there's no idle. So if you do a lot of stop and go, and also with the regenerative uh, braking, that will recharge your battery and that will increase range dramatically. You will conserve battery and it, it just, that's the way we ride enduro, basically. It's, it's stop and go all the time. So it's just, it just makes sense. Uh, the fact that it doesn't make noise, it, it gained a lot of interest really fast. So this bike behind me is a, an electric motion Escape R. This is a, a French company that came into the market about 10, 15 years ago and they started doing trials bike. So they did a really nice product that they have perfected with the couple years that they had. The electric motion has one thing that none of the electric bikes have, and it's an actual physical clutch. Jesus Christ. That's Jason Bourne. 
and it's a hydraulic clutch. It works beautifully and it will really disconnect the engine from the wheel. So, and you can manage to do pretty much everything you would with a typical gas pipe. In the electric world, you don't actually need the clutch. Here's, that's, the, that's the interesting part. So a lot of manufacturers don't put clutch intentionally because they, it's not actually necessary. Like I can ride this bike, even this bike, I don't need to use it. I can just twist the throttle and it will go forward. But here's the thing, like the torque on electric motorcycle is so crazy. This bike right there has 600 Newton meters. That's 442 pounds of torque. It's more than a car. It's, it's more than some trucks. It's insane. So as soon as you, you, the, the wheel starts spinning, it's gone. Like it's, it, you're gonna spin to infinity, you know? So you're gonna lose traction. And that's why the clutch, is, one of the reasons the clutch is so useful because you can manage that power just at the perfect amount, you know? And so you just gain traction and you go up that slick rock or that tree that's fallen down or mud or whatever, you know, you can just Tone it down exactly the way you want it. I think the, that electric motorcycles are the future of art enduro and enduro as well. Uh, time will tell if I'm right, but I honestly think it's a much more viable option and uh, it just makes so much sense. As soon as you, you'll ride one, you'll understand my passion for it. It's, it's, it's a game changer. It does help imp you improve your riding. It does help you find new spots to ride. And, and that just makes you a better rider all in all. These things are almost complete silent. So you'll hear just the tires in the dirt. You'll hear the chain. If it's not properly lubed, you'll know. <laughs> and you'll hear the brakes. There's no shift or to brake. Everybody, and you know, you know, at home, you, know, you know what I'm talking about. Everybody has broken a shifter in the middle of nowhere and you had to put like a pair of pliers or something to get home. That will never happen. There's no shifter, okay? If the clutch break, you don't need it. You can get home, no problem. You know, it's, that's all right. There's no fuel to spill. You drop the bike. There's no gas, it doesn't go anywhere. You know, it's, you can drop the bike and leave it there. It's no problem at all. Uh, there, there's no uh, radiator to, to bend. And that's like 350 bucks, man. I've paid them a couple of times. When you, you crash them, it costs a lot of money and they, they break. If you don't protect them and you put extra weight to protect them, they break. So these have basically nothing to break. Uh, I'd say to, to Art Enduro Rider, they're I think they're missing on something. It's, it's time to reconsider um, because we're, we're there now. Like the technology, the capabilities are here. For me, it was a life changing, you know, like it, 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 it got me like, I don't have to drive uh, an hour and a half to be on my bike. I think now it's time to ride the bike and I, I can show you the why, you know, they're amazing. <laughs>